it's so odd. I don't know how you can look at the eyes of a living animal and not realize that they have feelings. And for some reason, there are those that feel they're something different. Just an enormous amount of people that feel that animals are no better than this chair that I'm sitting on and that they don't have souls and they can chain them up and leave them outside and, you know, oh, maybe I'll remember to throw them some water if they need it or throw them some food. It's tough. It's tough. You learn a lot of things about people. You learn the... And sometimes it's a very ugly side. It's not an animal problem. It's a people problem. People have such varying ideas of what it is to care for something. Well, the worst in rescue is seeing the neglect and the abuse and the abandonment. It's a never-ending problem. We're killing five million animals in our shelters in this country every single year. It's a problem that, to be quite honest, the rescues, they just can't solve alone. We desperately need laws like the spay and neutering to be better and stricter all over the country. When it was real bad, people were just dumping their animals on the streets, leaving them abandoned in, in houses. How you treat a living being, you know, whether it's human or animal, the way we've seen them in the conditions that they've been in when we got them is shocking. And I am constantly surprised in different ways over my 13 years of rescue. People are fantastic and loving and people are cruel. Someone called me and basically said that there was a mother and a puppy under a fence in a landfill in Sun Valley, and I went out there, discovered that there were at least 45 dogs living in the landfill, and it took me about three years. I got all of the dogs except for three of them out of there, and about 20 dogs from the perimeter of the area because there's a lot of car lots and you know a lot of people that just don't care about animals and let them roam and dump them in the landfill, and then everybody was mating and more were born. It was real. It was really a nightmare. And it took me about a year and a half, and I got everybody out of there except for three. There were two, three males left, and I couldn't get them because they were feral. They had been born there. And one of them was Shadow. I got a call a year later that he was seen out there with a pit bull in terrible distress with wire around her neck and mange all over her body. And I went out there, and we were able to get her, and then because of getting her, we were able to lure him. And he was totally feral when I got him, never been touched by human hands. And it took me about three months, I had him in boarding, and I went every day and worked with him and worked with him and worked with him, and, and he's a totally normal dog now. You got a lot of hoarding situations going on in the Mojave Desert. Palmdale, Lancaster, I was part of a hoarding situation that broke your heart. We pulled 89 dogs out of that bad situation. Took us two months to do, but we did it. We did it. We got this email about these 18 dogs coming from Taiwan. They were being shipped over with an 18-year-old girl that had done rescue there, and her parents had done a tour of duty over there and were coming back. We met them at the airport and helped get them into foster homes and other rescues, and there was this one little ugly rat-looking dog. Oh, his teeth were green, his gums were green. He looked like a bat without wings, and I called him Batman and he had deformed legs, and he was about 12 years old. And after one week of fostering, I knew he was never going anywhere. And he was the love of my life. He owned us in every way, and he died in my arms at 18 years old. He was just amazing. It was all of like eight pounds. Mo 
most rescuers have leashes, collars, and dog treats in their car. So finally, you get the dog off that busy street. You start luring it in with dog food. If the dog is frightened, you're gonna throw the food down on the ground and you're gonna have the dog eventually come to you. That process can take anywhere from a half hour to three hours. But once you get visual, you're not going anywhere without that dog. I am Victoria Burroughs and I am the founder of Star Paws. I grew up in Malibu, California. I went to school all local. I was actually born here in Pacific Palisades where I show the dogs. So I call this my hood. I'm a casting director in film and television. I've been doing that for over 30 years. Doing rescue is wonderful and it's also incredibly difficult. I'm an actress and I had a lot of downtime and I wanted to give back in that downtime and so I volunteered with a rescue group and got sucked in from there and kind of went out on my own after that and for the last 10 years I've rescued over 500 dogs, put them in wonderful homes. I've been helping strays, people and animals ever since I was young. I am myself am a rescue, I was adopted, so I have a special place in my heart for people who do this. The advantages of showing in Pacific Palisades is weather. It's very family oriented. We're right next door to the farmer's market. People are inclined to want to make the animals part of their family. And that's very key for me in placing my dogs is that they become part of a family. Well, if you want to adopt, you're going to fill out an application. It is definitely not a first-come, first-served basis. It's just what's the best match for the family and the dog. If you are athletic and you've got a dog that is not athletic, then that's probably not a good match for you. If you want a puppy and you're gone nine hours a day, not a good match. We want this to be successful. So we match up the best way we can. After the application has been approved, then we do a home safety check, and this includes going to the house or reviewing pictures or both, and making sure that the dog can't go out, make suggestions on how to keep it safety proof. And then we do a week trial with a dog or a two week trial depending on the animal and its background. Once a dog comes into our group, it's a lifetime commitment. We will take care of that dog until we find the right home. When you come see the dog at adoptions, I pretty much want to see you on your knees, hugging and loving and kissing that dog. That shows me your heart. That shows me the love you're going to give this dog. It goes twofold. In rescue, you have a tendency to overdo, and you have to learn where to scale back and where the boundaries are. It can be managed. I've seen rescue groups that manage their time really well. They pace themselves and they keep it within limits of something that is uh, more manageable. So you can have it all, but at times when you're a small independent, it's very easy to get overwhelmed. It's tough. The emotions run high. It's certainly not glamorous or easy. The money and the time and the, the stress, the thing about it is the stress that it can cause you um, that really took a toll on me for a while and I had to get pulled away is you're constantly worrying about where the dog's gonna go, how am I gonna find the right home for the dog, then you put the dog in the home and then you worry if it is the right home or if the dog's gonna get out and get killed, which has happened, unfortunately. When somebody asks me, why are you doing it for the animals? For instance, I got asked, you know, why are you rescuing, you know, a dog from Taiwan when we have all these dogs here? It's how it affects you. Some criticize that the amount of resources, the energy, the time, the money is too extreme in saving just animals. It's a revolving door of death and it has to stop somehow. And it's not going to stop unless the laws are passed and implemented, which is not very easy to do. If people like us who do rescue didn't, who would? These rescues are doing such a great service, but they're only scratching the surface of the problem. Breeders just keep breeding. And then, of course, there are the puppy mills that are all over the country that are churning out adorable puppies, but the parents of the puppies are living in cages about this big, or as big as the dog is, or if they're big dogs, just enough for them to turn around. They're living on wire mesh. They get no 
exercise, they get no attention, they get no love, they're just these breeding machines. And it's a horrific fact in this country that we allow this to happen. They're so forgiving. They can be mistreated to the point of almost death, but they will still show you love. Overwhelming research is showing that humans that abuse animals are much more likely to commit a violent crime against people. When you love an animal, you, you understand that we're all one. You don't look at yourself as separate from anything on this planet. Seeing a family say the dog rescued them when they've rescued the dog is heavenly. Had I left that dog in that alleyway, it would still haunt me to this day. You look at all these lives you saved and made better, and, and you go and visit these dogs a year later, and you know they're just all over you because they're so grateful. They know what you've done for them, and, and that alone makes it all worthwhile, knowing how happy they are. When we did go take that dog to its new home, instantly bonded with the owner the moment we walked through the gate. Ran over to the guy, sat next to him, and it was like we weren't even in the yard anymore. Played with their dog that had just met. It was busy distracted playing with the dog when we left the property. Uh, and that was a really great story. After months of working so hard to get that dog into shape, you could tell it had clicked with its new family instantly. That was pretty amazing to watch. The reward is when you get them adopted out and the new parents send pictures and they're sitting on the couch and they're getting love and they're not scared anymore and they, they have full tummies and they're happy and they get to be dogs again. That's my reward. I believe we find our humanity in helping whatever it is in need, whether that's the homeless or the starving children of the world. And we have rescuers that support all of the above. It's all important. And even more so, I think if we sit by and do nothing, we're at greater risk of losing our humanity. They just want love, they do. And if, and if you show them love, they're gonna show you love back. And even when you don't show them love, they show you love back. It, it's, it's a shame that us humans, we're not like that. We're not programmed like that, but they're, they're just programmed to, to love people. This is my, my goodwill, and it, it just makes me feel wonderful, really wonderful.